Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting a two-way repeated measures ANOVA with two within subjects factors in SPSS. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the data editor in SPSS fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. And again, this is a two-way repeated measures ANOVA. However, in this repeated measures ANOVA, both of the independent variables are within subjects factors. You can also have a two-way repeated measures ANOVA with one between subjects factor and one within subjects factor. That's also known as a mixed ANOVA or split plot ANOVA. So in this example, this is a two-way repeated measures ANOVA with two within subjects factors. So let's take a look at these fictitious data. I'll be using these four variables, bright, loud, bright, quiet, dark, loud, and dark, quiet. I also have this treatment independent variable that I left on this data editor just to demonstrate how a between subjects factor looks. This is what we'd expect for a between subjects factor. We have 20 participants in the CBT level of treatment and 20 in the control level of treatment. This is a between subjects factor. These measures are within subjects factors. And there are, there are two, light and sound. So let's assume that we have participants and we are giving them an assessment to see how well they can relax with a higher score indicating a higher level of relaxation. And we're concerned that the light levels and the sound levels in the room may influence the score on the relaxation instrument on whatever assessment is being used to measure relaxation levels. So each participant in this design is being exposed to all four of these conditions to a room that is both bright and loud, bright and quiet, dark and loud, and dark and quiet. So every combination of the two constructs, the two independent variables, light and sound. Light has two levels, bright and dark, and sound has two levels, loud and quiet. And again, we're not using this variable. This is a between subjects factor. We're not using this, just these four. So to begin the two-way repeated measures ANOVA, I'm going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and then Repeated Measures. And you can see the default within subject factor name here is factor one. So I'm going to select this and change the name to light. That's going to be one of the two within subjects factors. So light, and this has two levels, again, bright and dark. So that'll be a two, and press add. So we have light with two levels, and sound will be the second within subject factor here. And again, this has two levels loud and quiet. Press add. So we have two within subjects factors, light and sound, and they each have two levels. Down here in the bottom left, I click define. And here you can see you have the within subjects variables, light and sound. And we have to match these up from the left side here over to the right. So we can see we have the first question mark here is one, one. So let's say that bright is one and loud is one. So it'll be bright and loud over to one, one. Then we have one, two. So that will be bright and quiet. Two, one will be dark, loud, and two and two will be a room that's both dark and quiet. Under plots, I'm gonna move light to the horizontal axis and sound to the separate lines text box. Click add, so it's light times sound. Press continue. And then under Options, I'm going to add Descriptive Statistics 
and estimates of effect size. Click continue. So notice in this repeated measures dialog, there is a list box for between subjects factors. And again, in this demonstration, I'm not going to be using a between subjects factor. If there were a between subjects factor in this example, of course, it would be this treatment variable, and we would just move this over. But in this example, this is just two-way repeated measures with two within subjects factors. So I'm going to click OK and take a look at the output. So we have in the descriptive statistics here, bright loud, bright quiet, dark loud, and dark quiet. And we can see that the only one that really stands out here is the room that was both dark and quiet at 51. The other means 44, 45, and 44. I'm not going to interpret the multivariate test table. I'm going to move down to the test of within subjects effects. Now you see here we have the Mockley's test of sericity. You can see there's no result here. That's because we only have two levels for each within subjects factor. So we're not going to get a result there for the test of sericity. So taking a look at the test of within subjects effects, looking at the main effect of light, and we can see that there's a statistically significant effect here, 0 0.002, and the main effect of sound is also statistically significant. However, we also have a statistically significant light time sound, an interaction effect, 0 0.043. This is statistically significant. So I'm going to have to run a paired samples t-test for sound and light to make sure that I indeed do have a main effect. So we have a statistically significant interaction effect, light times sound, 0 0.043. So moving down to the profile plots section, we just have the one chart. And you can see blue is the loud condition, and green is the quiet condition. So as you move from the one on light, which would be bright, so as you move across on the quiet, the green line here. So on quiet, as you move from bright to dark, you can see the score increased dramatically. Right, so the relaxation levels were higher. On the loud sound here, which is the blue line, as you move from bright to dark, the relaxation scores improved somewhat. So moving back up here to these main effects, show you how to follow up with these statistically significant main effects in light of this statistically significant interaction with light times sound. I'm going to go here to analyze, compare means, and I'm going to run a paired samples t-test. Paired samples t-test. And you can see we have, by default, we have pair 1 ready and we have variable 1 and variable 2 we can load. And what we want to do here, I'm going to expand this dialog a bit. What we want to do here is try to isolate light and sound. So in this case, let's look at light. So this will be bright, loud, to dark, loud. So notice that loud is the same for both variable 1 and variable 2 because we're trying to isolate light in this case. So we want the light to change from bright to dark as we move from variable 1 to 2, but we want the sound to stay the same, in this case loud. And similarly, we'll go from bright quiet to dark quiet. So we have bright to dark. So in both of these pairings, we go from bright to dark, and the sound, whatever it is, loud or quiet, stays the same. So we'll click OK and take a look at these results. Now we can see here in paired sample statistics, looking at bright compared to dark with the sound being loud on both, we can see there's not much of a difference here, 44.13 to 44.7. Bright moving to dark with the quiet condition moves from 45.38 to 51.4. 
So looking at this in terms of the statistical significance on the paired samples t-test, we can see for the first pair, which went from bright to dark in the loud condition, we do not have a statistically significant effect. 0.684. It's not statistically significant. And from bright to dark with a quiet condition on sound, we did have a statistically significant result. So this tells us that we cannot say that we have a main effect for light. The bright to dark on the loud condition was not statistically significant, even though the bright to dark on the quiet was. So we do not have a main effect for light. To test for sound, we just do the same thing, the paired samples t-test, except in this instance, we're going to be trying to isolate for the sound variable. So I'm going to reset this. So again, this is bright to dark for both of the pairs. I reset this. We're going to go from loud to quiet. So again, in this case, light stays the same. We have bright and bright and loud and quiet. And then again, dark, a room that's dark and loud and a room that's dark and quiet. So again, we're going from loud to quiet and the condition for the light variable stays the same at dark. We click OK here. And again, looking at these statistics here, the means in paired sample statistics, bright and loud and bright and quiet, fairly close together, 44.13 and 45.38, and dark, loud to dark, quiet, 44.7 to 51.4. Moving down to the paired samples test, taking a look at the p-value, moving from loud to quiet when the room was bright, we do not have a statistically significant result here, 0.378. And moving from loud to quiet when the room was dark, we do have a statistically significant result, 0 0.001. So again, in this instance, just as we saw with the light variable, with the independent variable light, for the independent variable sound, we cannot say that we have a main effect for sound because we have a non-statistically significant result and a statistically significant result. They would both need to be statistically significant to have that main effect for sound. I hope you found this video on conducting a two-way repeated measures ANOVA with two within subjects factors to be useful. Thanks for watching.